Yo yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to a brand new season of PSGL. It has been a while since we have had PSGL, but this is round number one around Portimao. And just like the Ironman League, PSGL has taken uh, a few notes from the Ironman League. And we are actually doing the first two rounds as mystery tracks. So we didn't know what track we were going to be driving on until we got into the lobby and no one could practice at all for this. So it's a little bit like real life racing, you just turn up to the event without getting to do any practice. And yeah, that makes it really hard. Uh, some people might have a bit of an advantage over others of course, because you might have practiced a track recently by accident or because of another league race. Um, but yeah, that's just how it works. Um, so yeah, um, I just did a lot of random track practice, so just time trial for several tracks that I had not done yet. Uh, Portima was one of them. And yeah, that gives us a little bit of an advantage, but that's just because we put in uh, some extra work. So uh, as you can see there, Otis Lawrence setting his first uh, qualifying lap, uh, going P1 with a 16-0. And now the world's record is a 15-0, so that's a full second faster, but this is only Q1. And by the time we get to Q3, we're going to be seeing uh, probably under the 115.5s, 15.4s perhaps, maybe even faster. Uh, I mean, F1 Esports pole lap times are around the world record, so uh, maybe someone uh, will get close to it. I'm not sure. I've never done an online qualifying session on Portimao on F1 23, so no idea what to expect here. Um, kind of just trying to invent the setup on the spot. The time trial setups don't really tend to work online, I'm not sure why. Um, but yeah, into our first Q1 lap we go then, DRS Open. As we head into turn one. Now Portimao not on the actual F1 calendar anymore. But still one of the best tracks uh, in real life to race on for sure. With all the elevation changes. Now I took it really carefully in turn one. I'm just going to try and build this wall session up. Um, don't want to make a mistake and kind of set yourself back a little bit. Um, by making that mistake. Uh, just want to build it up towards the limit. Um, as we head into the hairpin and try to get the power down, always hard around here. Um, never really sure if I should take that exit curve, I think it is fast to take the exit curve for sure. As we head into probably the most difficult corner on the F1 games. Um, the F1 cars and the F1 games don't really seem to like banking or elevation changes, so that's why it always feels a bit weird, especially that uphill ride. Um, yeah, the car is just feels terrible. Uh, through there and I'm sure everyone who has driven through there on the F1 games will agree with me uh, as we head into the final corner down to fourth gear uh, third gear definitely possible through there as well but I just kept forward to keep the minimum speed up um, and a bit of an easier life on traction as we head towards the line Deer has open actually went under the 10% the rest there and it's a 1.16.1 .1, which puts us P3 at the moment so that's not too bad went out again and the reason for that is there is rain expected um, in Q3 or Q2 at some point so I was like we might as well get some extra laps in just put on a new, another new set because we're not gonna use that for the race or quali anyway um, you know because between quali and race there's a new lobby setup anyway as we set a purple last sector and uh, go up to P3 again um, actually P4 at the end of the session so that's not too bad um, out in Q1 are Yoni Tormla, Fabrizio Donoso, Simon uh. Weigang, Alfie Butcher and Jet Norgrove here in Q1. Um, and on to Q2 we go now then. And yeah, that's what I was talking about. You can see how dark it is now as we are about to finish our first uh, Q2 lap. Um, it, it's night and day difference basically. It almost looks a bit like night. Uh, on that transition. Shanaka Clay goes to P1 with a 115.8. We go faster with a 115.720 and, and another improvement from Q1. I picked. I think so. Um, and yeah, that was probably the only lap we were going to get because um, Rain uh, already on the in lap. Um, that was another new set of tires used. So we used three new sets and that means we've got two remaining but we are not going to be able to use them um, because the end of Q2 was already intermediate and that means Q3 is gonna be wet as well which makes makes it fun you know 
Uh, Jake, Benham, Frederick Rasmussen, Ruben Pedreno en Luke Smit out in Q2. Um, so, um, yeah, it's not easy. Uh, it's actually, you can see the massive gap from us to P11, like almost half a second. Um, and yeah, that's, that's what happens when you've got mystery tracks because you can't practice for them. The, the setups are a mess, the balance is a mess. Um, it's, it's quite funny. Um, because you're really struggling um, as we go on to our first Q3 lap, uh, or end of our first Q3 lap. Um, and you can see it is full intermediate conditions. Now, in these conditions, I just wanted to be out on track, non-stop, just doing laps, laps, uh, learning. Um, but also just getting as much laps in as possible, because you don't know at what point the track is going to be at its best. It might be raining That's harder insane. or lower throughout the session, uh, or less, I should say. Uh, so we go to a provisional P1, but I, I was not happy with the lap. Um, yeah, it just didn't feel good. And you can see through turn one, two, we already one and a half tens up, almost one and a half tens up, as we put the power down through the uphill left. And yeah, one and a half tens up. Um, but yeah, as we go throughout the lap, you can see we're gaining, but we are out of ERS. And this is in the last sector. We still got a big run to come. Up towards the line we were over two and a half tens up maybe almost three tens up but we just started losing time on every exit on every little straight because we were running out of ers so um yeah this is not ideal and you can see a big exit coming up no ers remaining and we're just gonna be losing uh, losing ers losing all the way up to the line and from being almost three tens up down to only a tent up and yeah that was provisional pole thrown away unfortunately but we've got another um, one or two laps coming up uh, I decided to go for one lap uh, you can see one minute remaining in the top right and I actually changed the setup um, I wanted to take some risk uh, I felt like we were gonna be probably top five anyway uh, the gaps were quite big once again so I was like you know what I'm gonna send it um, however, it is raining harder, as you can see, we're already two and a half tenths down. And it seems at the moment like the track conditions have become worse. Yeah, it's just very frustrating uh, that Paul is slipping away at the moment. Um, and yeah, this is what I meant. You just try to be out on track non-stop, but it's not working. You can see the front is not gripping up anymore. Uh, we don't have good traction as well. Um, yeah, initially I thought maybe it was a setup change, but everyone went so much slower on this run. Um, up to half a second slower, just like us right now. Um, and the setup change didn't feel great as well. The balance was worse. Uh, that doesn't always mean it's slower, but yeah, uh, you can see we gained a 10 actually there, even though we are in worse track conditions. So um, yeah, frustrating, just very frustrating that we missed Paul here, kind of bottled a little bit, maybe we should have stepped out of that first lap a little bit earlier, charged the battery back up, uh, back up and then attack, but yeah, that's um, that's what happens. We couldn't know, of course, the track was getting a lot worse, um, but it is what it is. You can see Nicolas uh, didn't set a lap early on and then had to drive on the worst track conditions. You can see he ended up with only a 26-1, uh, or that's my guess, that that's what happened. Um, but yeah, Otis Lawrence on P1, Danny Resnick P2, Shanika Clay P3, ourselves in P4, Thomas in P5, Alvaro P6, Brendan P7, Isvan P8, Wilson P9, and Nicolas in P10. So, um, race strategy, again, going to be very interesting, simply because no one, or there might be some people that actually have done a league race around here recently, um, but of course, it was probably not very competitive. Um, not to mention, this is the only track to on the already. calendar that has the C0 compound, the hardest compound available. Now, there's an extra step in between, so it's C0, then the C2, and the C3. Um, so there's going to be quite a pace difference and tire wear difference between the hards and the mediums. But that's only going to make this race more interesting. We've decided to go for a brand new set of softs for the start of this race. We're starting behind our teammate Danny Resney. It's going to be five red lights. 
and away we go for the first round of PSGL. We get a quite a poor start actually relative to Thomas on the outside. We're gonna go side by side into turn one. We leave each other space and Thomas goes up to P4 at the moment. However, this corner turns to the inside for us, but then back to the outside for the next left-hander. And we decided to go for a switch back here, um, but I did not use any of my battery and decided to just stay behind and going a little bit offensive into the hairpin because I knew the pack would bunch up. And yeah, uh, I want to stay ahead of Alvaro. We're on the mediums, but together with Brendan Lee in P7, also on the medium. So they might be coming back later on in this race and make our life tough. So um, let's see um, what we can do in these opening laps. Um, lost the position already, so the start was no ideal. Um, but I have opted for quite low wings relative to qualifying and that is probably why we got a little bit of more of a poor start relative to others. There's not much you can do uh, on the starts relative to others on the F1 game. There's no clutch, you just put it in gear and kind of, yeah, let the upshift button go when the lights go out. Uh, so it's basically just reaction time and throttle application, nothing really with clutch. Uh, involved as Thomas goes for the move on Shanaka. Uh, we decided to stay behind for one more lap and uh, just keep our battery high and then wait until uh, the opportunity arises and lap two I'm gonna turn on the overtake button uh, or overtake battery whatever you want to call it and go for the move on Shanaka Clay and you can see we've got a good run actually and with the help of Slipstream and Low Wings, we're gonna straight away punch up to P3. And in just one straight leap, just 45% battery. So that is a little bit much, but we did gain two positions because of it. So it was probably worth it. And yeah, that was just a good uh, example of how low our wings are in this race. And time to get past Danny. Yeah. yeah, as you can hear, lap 12 now. This fan also pitted from P8. Both him and Freddy after boxing their strapping away. Yeah, as you can hear me say to Danny, time to pass Otis. We both want to be in P1, P2, of course, before we go into the pits. And you can see Otis trying to defend, but we've got the DRS and the high top speed into turn one. We go. Miss the apex a little bit. Luckily, uh, there is asphalt on the outside, so uh, push Otis a little bit wide. But there is around a kilometer of asphalt runoff on the outside. And Otis manages to just stay in the battle, not lose any time. We defend into the hairpin and keep P2 at the moment. Um, again, a little bit struggling on the traction. Every the entry. I'm not too confident, so just be mindful of that. Um, Try to practice in the quality. Yeah, we're just struggling a little bit on the traction, and that's probably because I of the low downforce. Um, that's yeah, just how. Sorry. The F1 games a little bit are. If you lower now, for you tend to struggle a lot in low speed corners. Um, so yeah, that's um, our struggle at the moment. But of course, in return, we've got insane straight line speed, and that helps us making those moves. We've gone from P5 to P2, uh, and we've got a fast lap as well, actually. Um, but our tires are finito. We're gonna have to box at the end of this lap for a brand new set of mediums. I wonder if anyone is gonna go. For the hearts, I felt like mediums was the best option, but we are gonna have to do 20 laps on those. Um, should be all right. Um, purple pit stop, of course. As in the top left, you can see Fabrizio the nose with a three second penalty for a brief moment, shit. actually. Yeah, Wait, so Otis came in as well. Up. What? Otis was 10%. Uh, uh, can we cut the lines? The can we cut the lines? No, 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 no. no, no. Okay. Yeah, it's out we go. Now there were some people who boxed a lap earlier than us. So it's going to be interesting to see where they filter out. We leave uh, enough space for Shanek on the outside there. He, he came as a bit of a surprise because he, he was completely behind when we turned into the corner and was completely side by side on the exit. I, was, I saw some fly in front of him. Um, Shanek attempts some higher than you, Gana. And yeah, Shanek made the undercut work really well. Um, he. Um, I had to concede that position. Of course, he is on warmer tires, so he was always going to have a little bit more grip in the first few corners of the outlap. Um, not to mention lower wings, cold tires, makes it a little bit hard as well. But um, now, 
we got our tires fully warmed up, lap 16. And 90, Shanika 90, Yano 85. And now you can see Otis going on the attack. But the second we turn on our overtake button, we are gone. And moving up to P2 around the outside. Or oh, it's actually P10, but it's a net P2 at the moment. There's a lot of people still have to box ahead of us. Yoni Tommel actually in the heart in P8. Um, and now you can see Otis making a move behind us as well. And now we can just recharge our battery a little bit. We cleared Otis and Shanika. Yeah, right. oh, uh, I can give you Jake. Yeah. And yeah, purple first sector for us as well there. Otis down to 50 as I... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and Thomas 8. Come on. Oh. Can you try to leave like half the gap? If, if possible. Yeah, I mean, I won't keep up anyway in the middle sector. But you got damage. Um, okay. It's becoming a bit interesting behind me. Yeah, Danny, yeah. Danny, push, Danny, 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 push, 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 push. Okay, we can yeah, try. Yeah, three wide. Push. What era is everyone? Uh, I'm on Shanika. 70. Shanika. Okay, I'm on 50. I'm on 50. Yeah, okay, I'm on 52 across the line. We're 1.6 ahead. Okay, Otis I'll has I'll nothing. Try. Otis has nothing. Thomas on 70. The problem with Thomas, he will pull the whole thing. Get, uh... So I'm pushing, but I don't think it's smart to use. Uh, right, got three more cars to get through, Danny. No ERS for Otis. Yeah, ERS out. Just push driving. If you feel like switching could be faster, do it. Yep. So yeah, crucial moment behind us there. Uh, with Otis... Uh, Shanika and I think Thomas going three wide into the left hand that we're about to go into and they completely kind of Perfect shunted deploy. into each other uh, losing Otis. each other loads of time yeah. now this has helped us a lot Thomas it's worth it for us to stay out of the arrest then because he's slowly catching 1.1 again I will pass you I will use okay not sure if it's worth it but we will see and yeah, as you can see there, getting past the teammates, Danny Bresne. Um, unfortunately. As we're trying, trying to stay out of the arrest, but it just seems like we don't have um, quite the pace. Uh, I'm not sure. Some people with slightly fresher tires in the group as well. Um, and yeah, that's making like two low wings, I think, so to lead. Yeah. But I think you will be good on P2, especially if you Thomas save. is using. Thomas is using. Okay, I will stop. I mean, he's in already. And yeah, we just... We're a little bit too low on the wings to have good race pace, I guess. Um, and yeah, that that's the risk you have to take in these kind of mystery tracks. Um, and that's how you end up with completely different setups. Um, because no one has practiced for it. And that's the scenario and right now. We've got slightly less pace, but we, we've got an absolute rocket ship on the straight. So the question is, can we keep these tires to the end of the race? Oh, I'm so confused. We're obviously... Two or three more laps until Soss will be slow. We are just Bring moving around so much more on lower down force. You can see traction is a lot harder. Got a little bit of wheel spin. Uh, these little micro slides all the time. Uh, simply because we have to push so hard to stay with other people in the middle sector um, as now we've got Brandon right behind us on the softs and the question is how long can we keep him behind he goes down the inside we choose for the outside because that's going to turn to the inside in the next left hander and we keep him behind for one more lap seven and a half tenths to our teammate Danny Resne so we are going to get DRS and that's what we need we just need to keep Brandon behind for one more lap because his tires are slightly starting to fall off as well. Um, eventually, they're gonna equal out, of course. So, if we let him go too early, we will never catch back up. If we can just keep him behind for one we extra lap, um, then we can win 55. this race. Okay. So, um, of course, he if he was behind us with 10 laps to go, then we would have not been fighting this at all. It would have been a different uh, kind of game we're playing. 
But now, um, we've got the opportunity to win, so we are fully going for it. Um, into the next hairpin, Brendan on the attack again, we go defensive. Um, I leave the space on the outside after defending on the straight, and um, again, Brendan right on the gearbox. But we are starting to drain our... I'm not sure how much longer I can keep this up, to be honest. Yeah, and as you can me say, I'm not sure how much longer I can yeah, keep this up. We are draining our battery, um, and our tires as well. Uh, I reckon it's going to be quite close with tire towards the end, and it's we might be struggling. So, again, we go defensive into the next right-hander, but, yeah, we're going to have to give this one up now. We squeeze him a little bit to the up. outside, but we give him enough room um, to make the move. Down and to uh, you can hear our engineer say, Brendan down to 25% ERS, and that is interesting, um, because we've got a lot more, but... We have to defend from it's Thomas behind now. as well, and he's on a Thomas similar strategy to us, of course. So let's see if we can come back in this race. There's still six laps to go at the end of this Thomas one, and you can see Brendan going on the attack on a teammate Danny Bresne, and Brendan is the one with Danny Pushman. Yeah, I'm pushing. I, I just saw Red Arrow and I tried to leave this space. And yeah, we are on the attack from Thomas now. I had to use a little bit of battery again there um, to stay ahead as the, uh, the field bunched up a little bit uh, ahead of us. And um, yeah, Brendan is on lower ERS, but of course, probably still the faster tire. And that's what's making our life a little bit hard at the moment. Um, but we are gonna. In the future, should I just put my front wheel on the inside or not? Yeah, I saw you did. Okay, okay. That's why I left space. I didn't know for sure. And yeah, now we kind of just have to stay behind Brandon. Just stick in his DRS, and then in the last few laps we can pounce. Um, you need to keep our battery high. Um, ideally, 100% of course. Now. He's down to um, but the question is as well: Can we keep our tires exit. alive uh, until? the end of the race there's five laps to go and the question is can we keep them alive we don't even have to defend really um, Thomas used some ERS on the exit but yeah the wings is just carrying us so much on the straight but it's leaving us vulnerable what on this? this particular exit that Brendan makes a big mistake starting to struggle with tires perhaps a little bit as well and yeah we just have to um, charge our bat battery back up for the last few laps now so on to the final lap of the race, then you can see Brendan 1.2 seconds ahead of us, our teammate almost 9 tenths ahead of us. Uh, we do have a full battery though, but our tires are just too far down to go for an attack. All we can do is just sit back, um, take the DRS basically, that's what we're going to do. So we can defend and get the maximum possible here. Hope they fight ahead of us, because you can see Brendan, has nothing. Brendan is flashing yeah. and... If they start fighting now, that means they will lose a lot of time, and that way There's we can start. get back up right behind them uh, and launch an attack with the help of ERS, um, because our tire situation is terrible, uh, no tires left, and all we can do now is hope for a battle. You can see Brendan desperately what, trying to get Danny? the power on, at the moment. Um, but yeah, it seems like Danny is in a similar situation to us, he just has the ERS. Um, slightly better tires, of course, uh, as he's running probably higher wings, and we're just gonna be bringing the car home in P3 as I'm trying to get the power down. Gonna have to go a little bit defensive here, um, but on the exit we're just gonna pull away again because of the ERS and the low wings. So we're gonna bring it home. Thomas, P3, better start than last time. Should have it. Yeah, you have it easily. Oh, nice. In PSGL. Um, I think we finished P4 or P5 in Bahrain last season and we ended up winning the championship. So P3 is, is a decent start. Not ideal, of course. We made that setup mistake, went way too low on the wings. But yeah, that's, that's the risk of these mystery tracks and that's the fun of it. So hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe for more league racing content. Hope you guys enjoyed PSGL being back and see you guys next time. Ciao. Yeah, yeah, yeah.